In this video we're going to look at Bresenham's circle drawing algorithm. Now the idea is we want to approximate this circle using the blocks that we can see here. So for example we could choose this one here and then this one and then this one here and here and here and here and so on and so forth. So we can generate a rasterized approximation to the circle and the Bresenham's circle drawing algorithm tells us which blocks to choose to make it look like a circle. So let's zoom in on this and we're, we will see how this algorithm is going to work. So this will just give us a bit of intuition. So the idea for the moment is that we're going to go from this square here and we will move one square to the right when we move one square to the right, we have a choice. Do we choose the top square here or do we choose the bottom square? Now, the way this algorithm works is that it chooses the square whose center point is closest to the circle. So let's stop this here and we'll see how that's going to work. So you can see here that the bottom square has a center point here and it touches the circle at this point here. So the distance is this distance here. Now the top square has the center point here and this small distance here is the distance to the circle. So we choose the square whose center point is closest to the circle. So we would choose this square. So that's the basic idea of our Bresenham's circle drawing algorithm. Let's go ahead and we will derive it mathematically. Now for the rest of the video, we're going to derive Bresenham's circle drawing algorithm mathematically. So if you aren't interested in all of the details of the mathematics, you can always jump on to the next video in which we take the algorithm and code it into our assembly language. But if you are interested in the mathematics, then stick around and you'll see how it is all derived. Now we're going to start off in this square here. The center of this square is this little pink dot. So we can call this square here P X of K comma Y of K. Now we're going to move to the right. So whenever we move to the right, we go from X of K to x of k plus 1. So we're going to call this little block here n x of k plus 1 comma y of k. So the y of k just remains the same because we're at the same height. So you can think about this n as the north block. Now whenever we move to the right we have to make a choice between this north block here and this other block here which we will call the south block. So you can see this is called S X of K plus one comma Y of K minus one. So it's Y of K minus one because we're going down in the Y direction. So we have to make a choice between these two and we know that we choose the one whose center point is closest to the circle. So you can see here that this point here is the center of this square here and the distance between this point here to the circle is this little distance which we can call d1. So you can see here that d1 is shorter than the distance d2 so we're going to choose the top block. Now in order to write this out mathematically we know that this point here in effect we draw a circle at this point and whenever this circle the radius of this circle meets the large circle here we know that that gives us our distance d1. So we can find the equation of this little circle here and we can call the equation of that circle fn. So fn is a circle, it's the north circle and it represents this north block. And we can say that this distance here from the circle outwards is going to be a positive distance. So in this instance here, d1 is a positive distance. So that's just by definition. Now the other circle here, 
is going to be centered at this point here. And whenever the radius of this circle increases, eventually that circle will meet the large circle and we'll have the radius d2. Now what we do is we call that circle f of s, so this is the south circle, and we define the distance then to the centre of that circle, which is d2, we'll define that as a negative value. So that's purely by definition. This is a from the circle outwards it will be a positive value, and from the circle here inwards will be a negative value. So we need a decision variable in order to choose between these two. So what we do is we call our decision variable pk, and the decision variable is going to be this distance fn plus fs. So in effect, it's the distance d1 plus d2. Now, if this decision variable is less than or equal to zero, it means that it's a negative value. So if it's a negative value, it means that this d2 here must be larger than the d1, because this distance here is the negative distance. So if it's negative, it means that this Fs, that is the south circle, is going to be larger than the north circle. So if the south circle is larger, it means that this point is further away. If it's further away, then we must choose the north value. So this is the case here. So if pk, the decision variable, is less than or equal to zero, then the f of s is larger than fn, so we choose the fn, which is the north block. Now alternatively, if our pk is greater than zero, it means that the d1 plus d2 is a positive value. So if it's a positive value, it means that distance d1 is greater than the distance d2. In that case, we're going to choose the smaller distance, which is going to be the south block here, or fs. So that's the basics of our mathematics. What we have to do now is we have to actually work out the equation of this outer circle here and the equation of the inner circle, which will give us the d1 and d2 values. It will allow us to work out the decision variable, and then we're going to have to work through the same process as we did with the uh, Bresenham's line drawing algorithm, where we're going to have to work out the next decision variable take one from another, and we can use that in order to uh, generate all of the decision variables. So let's go to the next screen and we'll take a look at that. Now the next screen is just going to be a lot of algebra, and I'll quickly talk through it, but you can always pause it and you can work through the derivation yourself and convince yourself uh, of how it works. So we're going to have a couple of pages of algebra here. But we'll just quickly talk through them. You can always just pause the video and have a read through yourself. So first thing to note is that the next k point, next x point is going to be x to k plus 1. But it's just going to be the original x k and then we're just going to add 1 onto it. So we're just going to go 1 to the right. So that just becomes x of k all plus 1. Now the y of k plus 1, that is the next y point, is actually going to be going down. So it's the original y point, but we take away 1 from it. So it's going to be y of k minus 1. That's just the first thing to note. Now, in order to get the equation of a circle, we can just use the x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So therefore, we can write the circle, so this is the outer circle, is going to be the value or x of k plus 1 squared plus y of k squared minus r squared. So we've just put in the values for our um, x and y coordinates for our circle Fn. Now we do the same for the Fs. So the south circle is going to be x of k plus 1 squared plus y of k minus 1 all squared minus r squared. Now we said the decision variable p of k is going to be given by the Fn plus Fs. So we're simply adding this equation here with this equation here. So whenever we add both two those equations together, we get this equation here. Now, we can replace the x of k plus 1 with the x k plus 1 here. 
and I've replaced that there. And the, we can replace the y of k minus 1 with yk minus 1, and I've replaced that here. So we're left with this equation here. Now we can then work out what the next value for our pk is. So the next decision variable. So the next decision variable is going to be pk plus 1. So all we do is we take this equation here and we replace our x of k again with the x of k plus 1. So we're going to have our 2 x of k plus 1 and that should be a plus sign. So that's plus a value of 1. And we're going to have our y of k will be y of k plus 1. And we're going to have our y of k in this minus 1 will be y of k plus 1 minus the 2r squared. So we can rewrite that in this form here to x of k plus 2 because we can replace the x of k plus 1 with x k plus 1. So the plus 1 and the plus 1 here will give us a value of 2. We'll have our y of k plus 1 squared y of k plus 1 minus 1 all squared minus 2r squared. Now at this moment here we can't replace the y of k plus 1 with this value here because we don't know what the y of k plus 1 is going to be. It could be one or another. So let's move on to the next page. So we can work out our difference p of k plus 1 minus p of k and it, goes, it gives you the equation below. Now what we can do is we can take the original value of p of k and then add on what we have above. So in effect we're just rearranging this equation here for p of k. So we're going to have our p of k plus 1 is p of k plus this here. So this here is just what we have above. So then we've got two options, either p of k is less than or equal to 0 or p of k is greater than 0 and we get two different algorithms depending on these. So if p k is less than or equal to 0 then we'll go um, x of k plus 1 comma y of k and the value for our y of k plus 1 is just y of k. So in effect we're choosing the north value here because the y's just remain the same. So therefore if we put these values back into this equation above here then we're going to get the equation below and it simplifies to p of k plus 4 x of k plus 6. So this is the equation we're interested in. Now the other option is if, if the value for our p k is greater than 0. So our y k of plus 1 will go to y k minus 1. So we choose the bottom value or the south value. And again we can put these values back into the equation above. And whenever we do that we're going to be uh, end up with this equation here which is a p k plus 4 x k minus y k plus 10. And again this is the equation that we're interested in. Now there's one other thing that we have to do. We have to get the initial value. So the initial value um, we're going to take the equation which we seen in the previous page which I'll bring up just now. So the equation we've seen in the previous page here is the equation for the pk value which is this value here and we're going to start off with the value of x of k at an initial position of 0 and the y of k is going to be the radius. So we replace the x of k with 0 and y of k with the radius and I've done this here so we've replaced this value here with 0 and the y of k gets replaced with the r. When we multiply that out the initial value for our decision variable is going to be 3 minus 2r. So a lot involved in that and you can take your time and read over each of the lines and uh, dissect it and check and see uh, that you understand it. So let's go now and we'll write the algorithm down and that'll be us finished for this video. So here is the algorithm written out in six steps. We're going to start off with the circle that we want to draw. To define that circle we need a centre point xc, yc and we need the radius r. So we initially start off with the value x0 is equal to 0 and the y0 is equal to the radius r. 
We then work out the first decision variable. It's going to be P0 is equal to 3 minus 2R. We then plot the next point, which is going to be our X plus the XC and the Y plus the YC. We then look at the uh, decision variable and we find out whether it is a value less than or equal to 0. If it is less than or equal to 0, then the next decision variable P1 is equal to P0 plus 4 times the value of our X plus the 6. Okay, so this X here is the new X that we get for here. And then we've got the X is equal to X plus 1 and the Y is equal to Y. Now, if the value for a decision variable P0 is greater than 0, then the value for our P1, the next decision variable, will equal our P0 plus 4 times the value of our X minus the Y plus the value of 10, and X is equal to X plus 1, and Y is equal to Y minus 1. Now, we continually go through this loop until we check and find out if X is equal to Y. If X is equal to Y, then we stop, and that's the end of the routine. If it isn't, we go back up to the beginning here. So it's best seen actually by working through an example, as all of these algorithms are. Um, but at least you've seen it derive once, and if you want to know where to get it, you know where you can come to. Now, in the next video, we'll go through a quick example of using this, and then we'll look at it in our assembly language. Where we will load it into our machine, and we'll see it drawing a circle. So that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.